It started as an idea to tell stories about the weather, reuse, and how we take old inherited structures from the past and transform them into something new. I distinctly remember the question, do you think we can get hold of a rig? It's big, it's brave, it's optimistic. No one's geared towards doing this despite what everyone talks about in terms of reuse. That's a big idea. Who knows if we can pull that off, but if we could, imagine what that would be like. You know, there wasn't a form for this. There wasn't a process for this. How do we create this blueprint for something that hasn't ever been done before? We've suddenly got the right funding for the right project. Whether you like it or loathe it, you can't help to be impressed by the feat of engineering that went on to do that. Some people didn't want it here in the first place, and those people now don't want it to leave. It was always going to be a polarising project. The highs have been so high, but the lows and the challenges have been really, really tough. Proving people wrong is a big part of what we like to do, um, and taking on projects that most people wouldn't take on for really good reasons. And I suppose when we found out um, early on that it was, we'd be the first people in the world to have done this, it was like a, like a red rag to a bull, basically, of just kind of going, right, okay. But we didn't bring a platform from the North Sea to Western Supermare to just stick a wind turbine on it. Everyone's wanted to do reuse projects for like 20 years, but there's never been a reason, an inclination to do it. So it's always easy to just follow the big five year process that has always happened before. But like at the top of their pyramid is like reuse, but it's never been done. So if we can, although we're a relatively tiny rig, if we can crack it as a principle, then you provide an option out there. So when everyone else is talking about it in the future, they can go, well, it has been done and there is a process to do it. A lot of the creative constraints that we had with the project were uh, the platform itself that we could have access to. Where do you go and look for one of these things? You know, they aren't on eBay. Their entire life cycle is planned five, ten years in advance. How do we kind of dip into that standard decommissioning process fulfill all of those kind of engineering and technical obligations that they have, yet provide us with really the blank canvas to, to turn the structure into sea monster. And we went into a lot of these conversations thinking that, you know, the oil and gas industry would think, who are these crazy creatives? But actually, it seemed that a lot of the responses we were getting were really positive ones, and everyone who we spoke to was really keen to help make this happen. We had one originally agreed in this country and then that fell over. And then all of a sudden we were being commissioned. We'd won the bid by that point, we were being commissioned, and all of a sudden we didn't have a, a rig. We had so many different people within the industry tell us, oh, that's possible. Reuse is something we're really trying to push within the industry. Definitely, definitely do it. You have our support. And then we secured a platform, which was a huge feat in itself. And then one by one, the doors, the doors closed when things got really real. How do we actually get it into the country? Everyone was like, yeah, it's fine, follow this process, we'll get it classified as a product. Then at the 11th hour, it was decided it was not a product, it was still classed as waste. But I think by then we'd got invested partnerships with different government bodies. And I think everyone just went, no, this is now gonna happen because this has to happen. We weren't going to stop. We weren't going to go quietly into the night. And if they were to champion the concept of reuse, across the industry, unless they allowed it to happen, their whole principle was a, a load of nonsense. Western offers a, a really unique set of circumstances that allowed this project to happen not only from a kind of public and a council perspective but also the the, the landscape you know it has that one of the biggest tidal changes in the world it has a beach that is nice and flat offers you know really good topographical features that allowed us to put the barge there and, and to bring it up the beach western was just that warm and welcoming friendly um, seaside town that said yes it said, yes, we can do this. Yes, we can make this happen. Yes, we'll work with you to make this um, a reality. 
then you, you get into you know the preparation of the Tropicana itself you know lots of ground engineering we are really changing the use case this is a big structure the legs themselves are I think close to 50 tons in total you know they have 450 tons of platform on top with probably another 300 tons of of things. There's a lot of load that goes through those four pillars. They needed to be thematically right, even down to the six degrees they're canted over. You know, that creates a huge engineering challenge rather than being straight, but you know, important creatively that it looked part of the platform, but equally important that it looked new. These bright yellow legs that are the same colour that that rig would have been. You know, show how would that, that kind of new and old integrate together. Pure grit and determination is the only reason this project happened. Every single person has always had such a generosity of spirit. We've all had to band together to find really innovative solutions to make this thing happen. We went through acres of climate scientists, like lots of different people in that space, until we found Ella and Emily we found literally 24 hours before we put the final form in. We wanted to have somebody who had like a really positive outlook which is quite hard in climate science. The team that we've assembled is incredible and everyone has their different strengths but everyone shares this vision about the need for creativity, the need to kind of reimagine what we do as a society. It was exciting. Um, in a way the whole creative industry worked quite differently to my scientific and field work. I said I, will, I would love to be part of the team but I don't want to be a sideline because sometimes accessibility isn't always considered right at the forefront. And in order to collaborate, you need honesty, you need trust. Um, and I think we've got to a place where everyone's opinions feel like they're heard. The problem is at the moment is the rig, even our rig is a thousand tons. So if we move it as a single structure, we have to have a shear leg crane, which is broadly the size of a 20-storey building to lift in. And the boat it arrives on is 190 metres long. On the barge in the Netherlands, we were still working through the final legislative challenges. We got four of the five permits. We had to go to make this project happen and we had to make some really difficult and challenging decisions. It left and then we announced that it was coming. I remember saying to Patrick, that moment it arrives and we see it, that is everything. Waking up at 4am and seeing the rig on the horizon, coming towards land. We knew once it was here and we had it, we could make it look amazing and we could bring it to life and we could transform it. But the getting the platform to the UK was just such a huge feat. The requirement for beach landing was so specific on a specific day. Everyone was tracking it on the app as to, is it happening? Where is it moving? Where is it now? And even Mamut, who were our partners, who did all, all that side of it, were like, we've never done anything like this, on this scale, with all the different aspects. It was quite a moment, and then crowds sort of built people who'd been up camping since the night before to just come and watch this thing arrive on the shore of their town. When it comes in, it's 415 tonnes of used steel coming in on a barge at the end of the day and beaching itself. At that point, you've got the next big move. You know, we skidded it across the deck of the barge onto a series of SPMTs, which drove a 450-ton rig up the beach in Western Supermare in front of you know the world press and public. And that huge crane move, you've got 450 tons on the hook. It drives back, seemingly effortlessly swings round. Whilst everyone's done their calculations to make sure A fits to B, you don't really know until it's on its legs. At that point, this is Sea Monster. I 
been working in climate science um, for over 20 years now, and I'm aware of climate change and global warming for the same number of years. How do we go from where we are now, which is on track for a future that is not really desirable, and how do we change track and move towards a future that is green, that is sustainable, that is not just environmentally friendly, but like friendly on so many different fronts. And reimagining and repurposing and redesign is such a big part of that. And it's about, for me, having a positive idea to present. Could there be an alternative way that we visualize this or an alternative way that we create something that both captures energy, so has a, a use and a purpose in that sense, but also has a, a visual and creative identity as well. Renewable energy can look different and um, can be incorporated in everyday life. It doesn't have to be a wind turbine or field full of solar panels. You know, if, if renewables were um, artistically informed and could be part of a placemaking strategy, could they exist more in city centres? And yes, they don't need to power the entire block, but could they power the streetlights? Could they power the irrigation systems for the green spaces? Not everything has to literally be the golden bullet. And it took a really long time to find a company that got it, that got that when you mix science and tech and design, this is the amazing thing that can be born. And it doesn't have to be what everyone's seen before. It doesn't have to be within the safe realm that we're, that we're all in. As a blank canvas, these structures are you know, a fantastic opportunity to do new things with. You know, they provide, in this case, you know, three floor plates at scale, you know, with a big load capacity. And, you know, all of those things are really great opportunities as both engineers and creatives to, to kind of work with. We started with the kinetic and then moved on to the solar tree, then on to the studio, then the weathering. And the last element that went in was the wind nest. We've got pockets of creative people doing lots of different stuff, but we don't have a hub where we're all together, so with Sea Monster actually happening, it's kind of brought a bunch of the creative people from the town together. It was nice to have those kind of specialists who have like really specific knowledge about just detailing something really, really well. You'll see several pendant fixtures that are hanging down. Um, they're actually the original fixtures. So we took those, refurbed them, cleaned them all up, rewired them, put some new LED warm white lamps in, and they, they, they look fantastic. Bringing Amit in very early on was really crucial to um, not just making sure that Seamonster was accessible, but also, you know, making sure the design had that integral accessibility aspect to it. It was actually quite refreshing because I got to sit down at the table right at the beginning and actually explain to them just the simple concept of making things accessible because everything is quite visual. And I love the fact that designers have this picture in their head and this is what they want. But sitting down right at the beginning and saying, well, if we tweak this slightly or move this or think about the type of materials we use for the handrails and the stairs, they can incorporate all of that into the final design of the Sea Monster. Very early on, people said, if you don't get the people here to love what you're doing, it will not be a success, and that couldn't have been more true. When we started the Awakening programme, we did the drone shows, you know, and then 20,000 people came out on night one, 23,000, 24,000. It's the biggest turnout they've ever had. Just the packed atmosphere in the town was unbelievable. Like, uh, I remember there was just a buzz in the air here, and I hadn't seen Western that busy before. Literally in the space of, you know, a week, public opinion about us and the project all turned around. We brought something massive that people had very rarely seen in the UK to Western to launch Sea Monster. The fact that we stuck with it, didn't take no for an answer, kept going, is the biggest thing that I think kind of comes out of this project, that it can be done. You just have to have everyone pushing in the same direction.
the day Simon opened to the public in Reston, that was probably one of my favourite days I've had. I remember just uh, just seeing the people on it and the reaction as well. First day of opening, are people actually going to come? And next thing we know, we have huge queues and we smashed all our targets for the opening weekend. But on a national and a global scale, to see when we opened the headlines that this is a world first project, we've done it, means so much. Sea Monster set out to do something truly bold, something that had never been done before. And when you walk down to the beach on Western and see this structure, see this beautiful piece of public art, you do feel that vision was realised. You feel that actually, through the might of engineering, the creativity of science, and the, just the vision of the people involved, something magical has been created, something which has taken us all to its heart. We talk about Seamonster as a platform. It's not just a physical platform, but it's a platform for conversation. It's a platform for play. It's a platform for um, education and, you know, communicating so many messages. The whole idea of Unboxed as a whole was creativity. So to do things the way that they've always been done is kind of not really hitting that mark. Just by observing the scale or being in the cloud and on the cloud portal, you will learn something by experience without really being told anything. I really do love the kinetic we built on the front face. You know, it's connection with the weather. It tells you the story of the wind. It just connects you with the environment in a quite an engaging way. The waterfall played out like we hoped we would in terms of the roar of it, the strength of it, kids getting absolutely soaked. It's awe, it's pure awe, you know. We speak about the project as journeys and this does take you on a journey around it. It offers, you know, unique perspectives onto the cloud portal. You know, you see the planting overhead, you see some of the sculptural elements, you know, you walk underneath the crane. You go during the day and it's one experience. You go at night and it's very much a trail. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole new story, that whole movement around the rig and looking at the shadows and the shapes. Yeah, this is the idea, it's the whole point is to start conversations and for it to be fun, like this is a really serious subject, but it also has to be fun, has to be engaging, has to be captivating. People have to want to come in the first place to have those conversations. And that's why there's a slide, that's why there's a cloud portal, that's why there's these beautiful gardens. All of this captures the joyous elements that we're trying to talk about. And in the same like breath, we're talking about those important issues like redesign and repurposing and reimagining for a greener climate. You know, we had obviously lots of doubts along the way and we've had a turbulent ride. We've tried to do something incredible by bringing all these sectors together. Unboxed had two real simple goals at the start. Bring people together and celebrate creativity. Now, after some of the challenges that we faced in the world over the last few years, nobody can argue that bringing people together isn't a good thing. This talks at a level that we wouldn't have been able to do if it hadn't have been for that funding. There's that great sense of satisfaction and also a great sense of pride that you've managed to create something with all of those engineering and logistical and practical barriers and challenges. The principle of reuse, I think, is, is more interesting now to us than ever before. It's, I suppose, inspiring people to kind of go, right, well, that is possible, you know, that that feat of what we just did there, creatively good or bad, is still possible. And taking that application into the areas, I think hopefully sets the bar of ambition of what projects like that can do. I think there's still more work to be done because I don't think it's over yet. And I mean, the actual physical installation is only one part of it. And actually a big part of our legacy is the education. A big part of it is starting conversations that then continue beyond the kind of physical presence of Sea Monster and Western Supermare. So I think in terms of success, we can't really measure that yet because it's only part one.